Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Adam's 1989 UK Mark I This is a 1989, yeah? Yes. And because before you said that you wanted a specific year, didn't you? Because you, is it you wanted the 86? Yeah, I want an 86 is what I wanted, a uh, year I was born. And I searched for ages and I found one and it just never panned out. Every time he wanted to sell, I didn't have the money. Mm. Every time I had the money, he didn't want to sell. Mm. Uh, and then this one was advertised locally. And I was like, yep, I'm going to go view it. Got an MOT. And, uh, Literally, I commented on the post on Facebook, and half hour later, the guy's messaging me. I'm actually selling this time. Uh, I'll let it go, but it's a project. It all needs sure. to come back together. And I didn't want a project, so I uh, went to see this one. It was bright pink. It was on wheel, uh, wheels, definitely on wheels. <laughs> it just weren't really my sort of wheels. Maybe we can throw up a picture of what it used yeah, to look like. Yeah, one in there, yeah. uh, but it's on like 35 profile tyres, bright pink scabby uh, but it had that golden 12 month MOT yes and I thought yes no project I can just drive it amazing and what what have you done to this since having this one I turned it into a project yeah um, so five months is how long I kept it on the road and then at the end of that five months it was leaking water in it was rusting through on the A pillars the rear quarters it was just tired and I thought well what I'll do is I'll quickly take it off the road. I actually I own a workshop. I have welders that work for me, but we were that busy. I actually paid someone else to do the welding just mm. to get it done, so it wasn't a project. Um, and I got it back from the welders. And I was like, right, all I need to do is coat it, put it back on the road. I'll be done. It's all okay. And then I found the wheels. <laughs> uh, and the wheels dictated it became a project. I, is it? I don't know how you feel about this, but do you think that wheels make a vehicle? Oh yes, wheels make it for the vehicle. This evolved around the wheels that I put on. Yeah, it. that's I what I meant. Adamant when I bought it, um, I was going to put on ball bay A's. Mm. I ran my Mark II on them. I absolutely loved them to the point my Mark II, which I'd sold, came back up for sale, and I bought it back just to have the might have a ball bay A's off of it to put on this. And um, when I fitted them, I hated them absolutely mm. hated them it just did not work on this vehicle so i put them back on the mark 2 and kept that 
And what are these now? Uh, these came up, again, local. Um, guy had bought them for a polo um, and never got around to doing it. So they were Michelin steels on a high offset that have been banded out. Uh, I think they're eight inch front, eight and a half inch rears, uh, 15 inch banded steels. Wow. Um, eventually they will change colour if I keep it. Um, eventually they will be create like an old English white is what I want to do with them mm. but at present I'm just enjoying it having it on the road and using it because you want to do like a is it like a Tonka toy look yeah so the whole sort of look I'm looking when I started it after I got the wheels was that sort of uh, Hot Wheels mm. 90s Tonka toy Hot Wheels truck um, bit childish bit immature bit like me <laughs> now what because there's gonna be a lot of people asking about the uh, the the, uh, the wheel arches there yes are they a specific can where did you pick them up from so they are from eBay um, they fiberglass wide arch kit actually designed for a mark 2 golf um, I thought I was gonna do loads and loads of loads and loads of fettling to get them fit mm. to to fit but as you know, when it was coming up to the end of the build, I was on a deadline. I was trying to get up to uh, Peak District for camping. Yes. And uh, I thought, well, I'll see what they flex right. And mm. they actually went on pretty well. They do look um, nice. They do need a bit of tweaking, possibly, if you were a bit more finicky than I am with it. But I kind of like the rough and ready look with it, as opposed mm. to polished show vehicle. I want to be able to chuck a couple of ton bags of rubbing, wood in the back of it and actually use it. Yeah, and you resprayed it, you did a lot of work with the, yeah. the paint and so everything. It was pink slope stroke purple um, mm. and a lot of filler, uh, a lot of rust, found a lot of damage underneath filler that I didn't even know about. Um, so a lot of body work to straighten it back out, try and pull it out, all the we rear wheel arches have all been tubbed out to make clearance for the wheels, the fronts had to have all the arches off again so it clear on lock um, and it was as I broke through the paint it's been easily five different colours over its life wow. so we've had to isolate it all, stop it reacting, prime it all um, and then we went with a slightly thicker nozzle on the spray gun to give a sort of a texturised look mm. to the military paint, it's actually a high zinc content military paint that I use to paint it. What's the what's the, uh, the the name of the paint? It's NATO Green. NATO Green. Yeah, it has a high zinc content, so it's meant to uh, delay rust a little bit and be a bit thicker, a bit hard wearing. Uh, oh really? It's a satin finish, as opposed to a gloss or a matte. It's like a semi-gloss satin finish. Yeah. The only downfall to that is, is if I scratch it, scrape it, or put a truckman top on the back and ruin it, the whole van, the whole van truck needs a repaint. Sure. Not just a polish up. Yeah, because you had a you, you bought a truckman for the camping trip, didn't you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Again, last minute, uh, kind of came up four days before we were leaving. Mm. Um, so I managed to pick one up, and again, locally, uh, dead odd. It was actually the guy who bought the one that I nearly bought instead of this. He bought it, and he had one on his farm barn's roof. Um, been there since his last caddy he owned four years ago. That's mad. Um, and I managed to get it, clean it up insulate it and throw that about on the back so me and my daughter had somewhere to sleep and what's it like sleeping in the back cold because <laughs> it was zero degrees minus one yes yes well we sat out didn't we about 11 o'clock on mm. saturday and i looked at the chair next to me and it had ice crystals on it <laughs> uh, it was not warm it was not fun um i'm sure now the sun's out and it's a bit warmer it'd be all right but yeah at that point i didn't think i was actually gonna have my toes survive the evening i was pretty <laughs> sure frostbite was setting in uh, but they're still there just about amazing now tell us about the 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 rear window because you've had that tinted I haven't have you had it tinted yes which is something i've never seen before on one of these yeah well um again because of what i do for a living uh, i work closely with a lot of different companies and the tint company the second i told him what i was planning with it was like oh i want to do it i want to do it let me have it mm. um so sent it off to him he tinted it um a bit of a pig he regretted it by the end of it because they're a nightmare to take apart and get back together again mm. um, but yeah he got it all tinted and everything um blacks it out keeps it a bit more private in there um just looks cool with the paint yeah he wanted to do all my side windows and everything as well but the reality was is 
it's it's a work truck. It's slammed on its arse. There's already a risk of it getting pulled. Mm. Without me having tinted windows all round, and whoever's welded it in the past had not removed the glass. So some of the inside of the glass has got pips and angle grinder splatter in. So if I'd have tinted it, it'd have looked horrendous. Ah. So we've just let it be. Amazing. And to, again, like to go with the theme, you've got the tinted rear lights, which yeah. are actually from Big Sam. Shout out to Sam, yeah. Bowl yeah. of sup. Bowl of sup. Um, he was on on the. Uh, on the gram. He was on YouTube. He d he showed his his truck. Yeah. So Sam hated them. Hideous. Why would you ever put them on a caddy? <laughs> uh, they were perfection for me. I knew what I was going for look-wise. I had them off of him probably, oh God, six months ago, seven months ago, and I knew when it was done, they would work, mm. um, and it was cheaper than me buying a new set, then trying to tint them all and do it, because there wasn't any smoke ones available for it. So mm. for me, they were absolutely perfect. Yeah. For Sam, he wanted a nice standard look, so again, it's a bonus for me. Yeah. Different strokes for yep. different folks. That's the one. Now you've got the roll pan as well. Yes. Where's where's that from? Uh, roll pan, again, it's retrofication. I bought it through eBay. Good old PayPal credit built my van. <laughs> um, but yeah, bought it through eBay. We made a couple of modifications to it. Uh, I was never happy with the fact that it had to be bonded on and then it stayed on. Um, there is a point where I might want to put a tow bar on or anything like that. So what I've actually done is I've made it removable. We modified it, we put back plates in bolts through so it bolts into the original hangers on the back now can be taken off if needs be um, but nice. will also stay on the only issue I have with the roll pan is the question everyone asks how straight is your tailgate yeah uh, banana shaped <laughs> mine is that bent with a roll pan on it will not open if you have a look mm. down here you can see how bad it is is here is a little finger here is a couple it is bent it's not that bad like on camera, I don't think. No, you probably can't pick it up, but the taper goes from sort of 8mm this end to about 30mm in the middle and back again. Basically, if you rolled like a marble across down the end... Oh, if I had a skateboard, I'd just use it as a half pond. <laughs> it's got a good picker on it. So... <laughs> So the whole bed's kind of like a mountain bike track the whole way through. Ah, yes. It's been used as a work truck. Right. It's been used and abused at some point in its life. So, yeah, the the, the roll pan is removable. Yeah. That's with bolts, isn't it? Yes. Just bolted yeah, yeah. on. So it's, it's got um, studs through mm. and then a couple of nuts on the underside and I can get it undone, uh, which means I can put a tow bar on if I want to mm. or anything at a later date. I can just... Do as I please with it. Now let's have a look at the, the bed because you've put the what is that for bikes and stuff? It is, it's bracket for my mountain bike. So, so my hobby is mountain biking, so that for me I can clamp my forks in there, it keeps the mountain bike upright in the back. It also means if I am camping I can throw it on there. I cheated with the rear bulkhead is I never ground the welds back down because the idea was is it came with quite a big sound system in when I bought it mm. so I was going to remount all the subs and everything back in there but I'm still in two minds as to whether I do at the minute so I may require more body work at some point and uh, finish off that rear bulkhead properly if I don't put the subs back in that were in it right but for the time being it got me to uh, Heat district. <laughs> Absolutely. So Time you can was of the essence. You can kind of see on the paint where the the topper has yeah, sort of taken it off and that killed it. Um, it did what I needed it to do. Mm. Uh, I regret it to a degree. Um, the question is, is do I have to put it back on and leave it on, and then I don't have to worry about it? Yeah. Or do I put the whole lot in my shop on a Saturday, hit the truck with a DA sander, and respray the whole thing? Mm. Could have it back on the road by Monday. Because yeah. I think we're the same. We sort of both love the profile of the truck without yes. anything on the back. Yeah, and that's my thing. My biggest thing with these is the way they look from the rear. Yeah. Uh, I'm an arse guy. It's got a nice <laughs> arse. Uh, I love the way it looks from the back. I love the lines of it. Uh, the truckman took me a while to get used to. I didn't mind the profile of the truckman from the side. I didn't mind the profile of it from the front, but it just looked like a hearse. Mm. From the back is big, it's square, sharp corners. Um, gotcha. This looks really pretty. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about the suspension. Is that a rear axle flip? It is a rear axle flip. If I call it the lack of suspension, it would be the best bit <laughs> with it. Uh, it is an axle flip. It's got shortened drop links. Um, 
it has the most impressive amount of travel you've ever seen and most of it comes from the tyres hence me upgrading the tyres to 55 profiles or 50s I actually think they are mm. it's because it had nothing in there it slammed and knocked through everything it's got about a quarter of an inch of movement on the actual leaf springs themselves wow. um, maybe half inch if we're lucky but most of my suspension comes through the tyres and the seat Wow. Uh, front end again bit softer coilovers at the front it's got a bit more play in it but not a lot <laughs> wow still though i think it just looks really really nice just it's evenly balanced as well like yeah. just slammed keeps it level it goes over speed bumps since i put bigger tires on it yeah um i couldn't use it i use it as a shop truck so i use it for work and I couldn't visit a couple of my suppliers because they had little speed humps as you went into their yards. Really? And grind out and get stuck on them. So now it's got the bigger tyres on, it just goes over them. I occasional catch of the exhaust, but I'm not left balancing on sills anymore, which is nice. <laughs> now, tell us about the interior because it's yes. got a really nice sound system. It has. Uh, so when I bought it, it was kind of a bonus. As I opened it up, I was like, oh yeah, cool. It's got doors and speakers and... Mm. I didn't think anything of it. Um, when I got it back and actually had a proper look, it's full Phoenix Gold components. It's got... Phoenix uh, Gold? Yeah, Phoenix Gold. It's got two amps built into the back. Uh, one to power the subwoofer, one to power the speakers. Subs currently aren't in, but I've just kept the amp in there just in case. It has two 8-inch subs in the back when I got it. Bulkhead was all big squares cut out knock-on trim and it had a ply box that was uh, lined in vinyl the issue i had is of my house at home my driveway is at this sort of angle so every time it chucked it down it ran over uh, down the bed up and over the little uprights and flooded the inside of it uh, hence me finally taking it off the road to try and do something with it i was fed up as you know from yourself of every time i got in it it had six inches of water in the bottom oh yeah um, the door cards were unlined at the time, it was just open ply, everything was going damp and mouldy, and it was just, it was tired, it was worn out, the dash had all delaminated, the old dash had had it and everything, so it was a, let's do something with it. Yeah, um, and you've got speakers on the, in the doors as well? Yes, yeah. So what are we looking at here? Again, Phoenix Gold, uh, I want to say they're five inch at the back here, four inch, I believe, at the front. Um, obviously they're not your standard door cards I had none in it they were just ply when I got it um, so I've redone these ones just trimmed them up eventually the bench seat will be trimmed to match but at present time and money did not allow either mm. so it's uh, I got it as far as I could um, so bench seat again big one for me uh, yes it had two uh, polo GTI seats in there and I'm a big lad and they were not the most comfortable. I just had a dead leg all the time from the bolsters. <laughs> so I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll build a bench seat. Uh, my dog, uh, dog, plural, dogs, hated the single seats. One of them was scared of the whole truck um, <laughs> just because it's loud, it knocks, it bangs, and he's a bit precious. Um, so I thought, right, I'm gonna put the bench seat in, we'll get the dogs in. They've both got somewhere to sit, they're off the floor. So we fabricated up the bench seat. It was originally from a Mazda Bongo. Um, uh, what I did is I got two standard bases, the Mazda Bongo seat, chopped them all down, got them as low as I could, and then uh, welded the two together, basically. This is Mark III of the seat. The first one I got in was too high, my head hit the ceiling. <laughs> um, just wasn't great. The mm. second time I got it in, that was fine, but I'd managed to somehow twist it slightly, welding it so nothing could line up properly. Um, so Mark III here, it's low enough, uh, it goes back far enough, clearance is nice, it bolts in like it should. The only issue I've had is the first time weekend I had on it, I drove it 750 miles in a weekend and my back's still not forgiving me. Oh uh, no! It's a lovely seat for going round locally, but on massive journeys 
um, I could probably do with something a bit more comfortable. Sure. But the dogs appreciate it. We yeah. Come home to work with me in the morning, and that's all it was really about for me. Oh, that's nice. Can can we see? Because there's going to be people asking about the gear, the yeah. gear shifter, like because I've seen a lot of times where people have the bench seats. Yeah. They sort of is the term goosenecking. Do they yes, gooseneck? Yeah, yeah. So they put like a swan neck. It'd be over here because we're British, right? <laughs> so it'd be a swan neck. But yeah, gooseneck um, to clear the front seat. If I go around the other side, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is my biggest tweak: is I didn't want to start messing around goosenecking it or swan necking it, depending on where in the world you're from. Um, so at the minute, it's in neutral. First load of clearance. Second, just misses, third, and fourth. So there's actually loads of room. Yeah, loads of room. Um, obviously, I've put a gear stick extender on mine as well. Um, mm. It's something I do in most vehicles I own, whether it's my T4, which actually had the same extender in. Um, my Mark III had a mountain bike gear knob and a uh, handle grip and an extender to get it higher. Uh, it's just more comfortable for me personally. Yeah, and, nice. Uh, yeah, the world's baggiest gear linkage. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, the other one, obviously, with the bench seat is the handbrake relocation. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, let me come round. So, U brake, E brake, depends where we're from again. Um, I cannot take credit for it. Um, it was in the van, well, van truck car thing when I bought it. Mm. Um, the girl before me, when she'd bought it, it had a Beetle bench seat in. She was a bit shorter, struggled to reach the pedals, so she took it out and put the uh, polo seats in. But the handbrake was already relocated here, so I'm not sure what it's from. I've had to tweak it because it just didn't work, it was horrendous. But all you do, twist and in and it's off. Wow. Back up and it's on. Uh, it is starting to stretch the cables again, so I am going to have to have another tweak with it all. Mm. I think it's probably at the point where I just need new cables for it. but. Not knowing what it's from, I don't really know where I'm going to get the cables from. I might have to have some custom made mm. and do it that way. Wow. Any uh, fancy little tricks in the dash or anything? So the whole dashboard's brand new. Um, dashboard, well, not brand new, but brand new to me. Yeah. Um, so it's from Mark 1 GTI. Um, mine had had it, all the vents had blown out, the front was all delaminating. It was just really poor condition. Um, so that's all in there. Obviously, stereo is in, but that's standard. Um, I still haven't finished modifying the trim that goes down here to actually work with the handbrake, but mm. at some point I will. Um, at the minute, I'm just enjoying actually being able to use it after not wanting a project and it being off the road for 15 months. I'm uh, yeah, just trying to get it done. What about the engine bay? Because it's uh, the, got the original it engine is still. Totally original. Yeah. Should so, we have a look? It's. Uh, Almost as disappointing as my parents were in me. <laughs> so if we open it up, it's prepared to be underwhelmed. Something I tell my wife quite often. <laughs> so it is your bog standard 1.6 diesel. Um, had it serviced when I put it back on the road, so it's had a full service, cam belt, the lot, oil changes, filter changes. It looked like it had never been done ever. Really? Um, the guy who did it said it's a long time since he's fought with bolts for a service that much. Wow. So God knows when it was done last. Um, white engine bay? White engine bay. So apparently it was Alpine White originally from looking at the manual earlier for wow. it. Uh, so I've got the original service book and it says it's Alpine White originally. Wow. Uh, it, that is anything but Alpine White. I would say it's slightly dirty white. Uh, eventual plans, probably a 1.8 turbo lump. Mm. But the reality is, I didn't tell you this, um, I ran out of fuel the day before yesterday. Right. I hadn't put any in since we got back from the Peak District. Really? So we filled up up at the Peak District and I'd done 340 mile, uh, 320 miles there and I ran out the other day here at 950. Jesus. Um, and I hadn't put any fuel in it. That's ridiculous. Yes. Um, so it's kind of delayed any plans for a 1.8 turbo lump when I can get 600 miles plus to a tank of fuel. 
That's amazing. Yeah, so I topped up that last, uh, not even the last fuel station. I think you did two fuel stations after me. Mate, I'm filling up all the time in that truck over there. Yeah. I am filling up all the time. Well, mate, I, I literally, I hadn't topped up since we've been back from the Peak District. I just ran it down just to see how low it would go. Yeah. And the answer is I can get around 630 miles to a tank. Wow. Out of it. Um, yeah. That's amazing. So I might end up putting a PD lump in it if I do mm. an engine upgrade, but at the minute it's kind of up in arms about what I do, uh, where I'm going with it. Um, so I don't know. At present, I'm quite happy with what it's got. It's slow, it's got four speeds, and all of them are slow. Mm. Um, but it gets me there eventually. Yeah. Now, what I have noticed as well is you've got that really super long rain tray. Yes. Look at that. Which yeah. Apparently, that's not standard. No. What, where is that from? Um, apparently, it's an eBay one. Sam was saying. Oh or right. Something. I'm not sure. I didn't know. Because all it's I got... know is when I got it, it was bright pink. It's got the badge there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm a bit don't know, a bit confused. But then also the inspection bit for the VIN number is on the wrong side because my VIN number is in fact here. So that's again a bit of a red herring. If I take it off. VIN number is actually this side. Mm. What I do have is someone has welded in extra supports either side of the scuttle panel. Oh yeah. Which must have seemed like a great idea unless, like I had to do, the motor's gone for your uh, blowers. Really? Yes, and the, you watch all the YouTube videos and everything YouTube, uh, <laughs> and it tells you to take it apart and it just slides out here. And mine doesn't slide out here, and also my window wiper arms didn't slide out there because of these extra bits. So I ended up having to disassemble it all in the dash. Then my new one I had to take apart, put in piece by piece, rebuild it underneath this compartment, and then slot it into place. Christ. And just quickly, you see this sort of cage here around yes. the heater matrix. I believe the American pickups didn't get that. Ah. See, I think this is like a Euro. So it's thing. to stop crap being pulled through, basically, yeah. so we don't get pelted in the face with squirrels' nuts and <laughs> things. <laughs> squirrels' nuts. Squirrels' nuts. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, yeah, it's a standard. Yeah, she's. She's standard. Whether it stays that way, like I say, is undecided. Yeah. I have got a 1.8 turbo lump on a stand in the workshop. Um, it's got a standalone ECU and it's meant to be kicking out sort of 220 brake ish. But I bet it doesn't do 600 miles to a tank. Yeah, and that's the that thing, isn't it? Is uh, you've got to sort of choose yeah. what you want to use this for, yeah. I suppose. Fuel prices are how they are. I mm. use it every day. Um, I sold all my other cars just so I'd use it. So yeah. for me, it's a, I'd sooner keep the mileage at present and then decide maybe a year's time what I'm doing. I might just collect up the parts and then if I want to do it, I can. If I don't, I can sell it all as a kit and do it that way. And you've also got just a, because I forgot to say, you've got a, a badgeless ba grill. Yeah, that, sacrilege. That I know everyone moans about it, but Again, it came with it. I've just never got around to changing it. Mm. Uh, but it also came with an eyebrow spoiler, so you'd be pleased to know I took that off. <laughs> at least it was uh, hideous, yeah, to say the least. Again, what I'll do is the picture I'll dig out for you to throw in mm. will be the day I picked it up on my drive with bricks behind it and an eyebrow spoiler on. <laughs> Stop it rolling down the road. Amazing. But it's it's now yours. You've got an MOT on it. It's it's running and driving, and it does a shit ton of miles. Yep. It's awesome, I think. Yeah, mate. It's, uh, it's how I imagined it when I started. So a the bonus bit. A so I started changing it. I knew this was the look, and this is how I saw it. Yeah. And I get grief. Oh, you could have painted the screws black, or you could have blended the arches in, but that wasn't the look I wanted. Yeah. I wanted that sort of rough and ready agricultural Tonka toy sort of look with it. Yeah. Um, so it works for me. Sweet. Now, obviously. You uh, you mentioned the one eight turbo. Yes. Other than that, like, is is there any other future plans that you can speak of with this? Like, if you had, if money was no option, uh, what what are the remaining things that you'd love to to take care of with uh, this? Probably air ride it. Um, if I'm totally honest, right, it sounds really bad now. Mm. If money was no object. I'd take it back off the road. I'd sandblast the whole lot back and do a proper back to bare metal full restoration on it. What do you mean back, oh okay yeah. So I would literally have the whole thing blasted, 
take back to bare metal and start with it completely stripped and just not go again because it's been done but obviously there's areas you can't get to when you're doing it mm. a bit so I would actually start the whole process again uh, just because I'm a glutton for punishment really but then it'd be air rided up or everything brand new shiny mm. brake lines and everything replaced just the whole lot would just be like yeah yeah and then I'd never use it and it'd be <laughs> pointless <laughs> Because I must say as well, and there are, a lot of people didn't know this, but you had this in an insane like bits everywhere in your workshop, <laughs> and then I was like, let's go camping, and you had a pr you had a deadline, yeah, and you stuck to it, and I'm sure there were times where you thought, oh, mate, it nearly broke me. I did a lot of hours in a very short amount of time. So. Yeah. You know, I run two businesses as it is. I've got my uh, camp conversion company that I run. I've got a storage company as well that I run. Mm. Um, so I've got that going on as my nine to five, or is it actually is, it's normally sort of a half seven till eight kind of job. Mm. Um, and then obviously we decided, yeah, let's go camping. And I did my party trick, it's partly my own fault as it was ages away. I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. And we were so busy with work, I just kept pushing it back and pushing it back. And then in the end, I think it got to about four weeks maybe before we were going, maybe five weeks. And it was like, if I don't knuckle down now, we're not going to get this mm. done. But you did it though. You you, yeah. you you literally did so much to it in such a short space of time. I was lucky the welding was done. So I'd finished the welding, but mm. there was no prep work. Nothing had been ground back. Um, so all the welds were still on there, but not smoothed in. New panels were in. Some needed finishing. As I've got through it all, I found more. Um, I even found more welding at one point. It's the floor three times I said I was finished, and then I found more. Um, but yeah, we got it done, and then it was prep, and I did the, yeah, well I hit it with a DA sander, it'll be alright, and as I've took it back, the panels were just filled with filler, they were all caved in, so I've ended up having to take the whole lot back to bare metals in rear quarters, and try and tweak it all back out again before we put less filler in to try and make it nicer, and mm. obviously I've had issues paint reacting, I've had to use isolators, and it, it, it was hard work. Character there's, building, yeah, mate. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. Is It was finishing work at five and staying here till eight every night. It was, I did, I think I did twice. I did, a, I finished work at five on a Friday and then I stayed till midnight, uh, went home. And then I was back in at six on the Saturday and I was doing six till ten on the Saturday, go home, come back in for sort of nine on the Sunday and do nine till five again, just try and crack it all. Um, starting early so doing bits to it in the mornings um, and as it sort of finally got into paint the putting it together I will be dead honest is I cheated and I did it during work time I started putting a lot of it back together I got some of the lads to help me with bits that work for me just so we could get it through uh, the biggest person I've got to say thank you to because she'll kill me if I don't <laughs> is Bethany uh, my daughter number three child um, who came in every Saturday with me worked on it with me, sanded panels, rubbed it back, uh, generally acted like a lunatic to give me moral support. <laughs> and actually came away to the Peak District and she was dead excited about it. Honestly, we didn't let her bunk school so we could go on a trip camping. Mm. It didn't happen. She was definitely ill. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we had a good time, I think, and it was yeah. like one of those labours of love. And oh, it was a long old drive. Yeah, it was a long drive, but we did it. And but like, we can say we did it, we and can. you can say you you did this yeah. in such a, a great. So it was kind of five weeks mm. from shell, and if we say shell, the engine was in it, but there was no interior. Mm. Nothing was in there. The dash was all out. The steering wheel was on. There was no doors on, nothing was painted, nothing was prepped, everything was in pieces. I didn't have the windscreen, I didn't have a battery for it, um, I just kind of last minute.com, pull it back together. If I open another company, that's probably what I'm going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's running and driving, and speaking yeah. of driving, shall we have a little blast down the road and you can take me along and yeah. see how it drives? Yeah, yeah, not an issue at all, mate. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. 
today. Told you it was overwhelming. Oh mate, it's it's nippy. It is quite nippy for an old diesel. This is just a standard engine. Yeah. yeah. It pulls that though. That is a standard bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, she's all right. Uh, you have to drive it hard to get any kind of performance out of it. But it is a typical old car. If you drive it hard, it will try and reward you for it. Right. Have you always wanted a Caddy as well? Is um, it? Yeah, yeah, no, not since I, I was never a Volkswagen guy. Um, sacrilege, I liked Fords. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was big into my Fords and Peugeots in my teens. Um, these were kind of Volkswagens. I was in my 20s long before I uh, learned what she's doing. I know. On the Caddy and iPhone. Ridiculous. So I was into my. Uh, Volkswagen is still sort of mid 20s. Um, Caddies, it's easily 11 years now, probably 12. And I saw one, same as you, Rafa yeah. Nui. Yeah. Uh, in Sandow. I was like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Gotta have it. Um, and it took me 10 years, it took me sort of two to three years of trading um, to be able to afford one. I got it and I was like, yes, and then it was a bit of a turd. Um, so, yeah, two years later, finally driving round in a caddy. And what's it like? like what, how would you describe it as driving one of these? What does it make you feel like? What, is, what do you uh, feel? So, how do I feel driving one, or yeah. how do these feel being driven? Well, yeah, like, I mean, like, so do you look forward to driving this? Uh, um, I look forward to the smiles. Yeah. Uh, the reality is, um, it's sacrilege, I'm going to say it though, it's what I told my daughter, is you wouldn't buy one for a driving experience. Right. Uh, especially this lowered big wheels, all that stuff. Sort of thing is it drives exactly how you'd imagine an old VW commercial truck to drive. Yeah. Uh, but it makes me smile every time I get in it. It makes me want to drive it. Uh, I actually look forward to driving it. Uh, but it isn't a driver's truck. Top Gear Jeremy Clarkson just be pulling it apart. <laughs> uh, they're definitely not meant for what we've done to it. Sure, standard high as a farm truck. It's absolutely lovely to drive. Um, this, yeah, it's it's just what it is, mate. It's an old truck. Yeah, it's an old commercial vehicle at the end of the day. Uh, but that's kind of half the appeal. Yeah, it's the same as when I had all my uh, transporters, when I had my T4s, because I always preferred them over the T5s, purely for the fact they drove like a van. They drove like they were meant to drive. Um, but it's the people's faces, especially, obviously, it's low, you get the, what is it, is it custom, have you made it yourself? Yeah. And when you try and explain that they left the factory, it has pickup trucks, no one believes you, and even when they do, they're still not convinced, and you're like, yeah, 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 VW definitely made them. Um, I get stopped all the time with it. It's, uh, I don't know, I'd say it was a nightmare, but I quite enjoy it. <laughs> You know, chat with people and interact and sort it out. Education. So there you go guys, that's Adam's Mark 1 Caddy. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this where we film other people's Volkswagen Mark 1s then please leave a comment below and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos. Thanks again Adam. You're was, welcome mate. Thank this you. was great. Guys, I'll see you in the next video. Turn up the 80s, sounds of the 80s, Swept to the greatest, say the day my mama made me 99 problems, why I don't look or sound like